Here we're using the Pi interface for Emerson Delta V batch. Let's take a look at the property templates, which allow the interface to create event frame attributes. This is in contrast to tag templates, which write to Pi tags and will be discussed in a separate video. If I go to templates, click on property templates, by default, no property templates exist. But if we were to right click and add default templates, the interface will create two. Before we do that, let's take a look at our event frame here in Pi System Explorer. And if I go down to the initialize phase and to attributes, you can see that no attributes exist yet. And those will in just a second once we add the property templates. If I right click and say add default templates, two property templates will show up. The first here is triggered based off of the recipe value, where the event column equals recipe value. And the second here triggers where the event column equals report. For both of these attributes, the name of the event frame attribute will get its name from the descript column, and the value would be from the pval column. Since these are included here under the property tab, the property will be triggered at whatever level they live at inside the EVT file, not just triggered for those that exist at the procedure or unit procedure level, for example. And the actual attribute will be created at that same level where it lives. And that's because the at recipe level default property is selected. Now, alternately, you could select under root node, and this would take any of the triggers for report or recipe value. And if those exist anywhere uh, uh, for your unit procedure, uh, phases, anything, any level like that, it would take all of those and move those under the parent, the very top level of end frame, if under root node was selected. But in our case, we're going to leave it at, at recipe level. So let's take a look at our EVT file. As a reminder, we want to look at the rows where the event column is equal to recipe value or report. And for my EVT file, both of those live in the initialize phase. So that's where we expect these attributes to be created, because we said create them at the same level where, they're li where they live. We have our descriptor for these two as instrument check and report status. So that would be the two names of the attributes that would get created under our event frame. And the values are true and complete. I'm going to save these settings and restart my interface. And then we'll take a look at how our event frame has changed. Back here in my initialize phase, sure enough, I can see that two attributes have been created called instrument check and report status, and they have the value of true and complete. The timestamp here is 3.14.18. This does not correspond to the timestamp in the EVT file. This is actually the start time of this phase. Let's head back to our EVT file, and let's say we wanted to create an attribute where the event column equals parameter. And in this case, I happen to have two. They both live in the initialize phase, and they have uh, a descriptor of flow and value of 12 and 13. Let's show how to set this up. Back here in Pi Event Frames Interface Manager, I'll right click and say add. This would be the name of the attribute, and I want that name to come from the descript column. And the value, I want to come from the pval column. And data type, we're going to say auto. And I want it to stay at that initialize level and not be bubbled up to that very top parent. So we're going to keep this at recipe level. Next, we'll go ahead and write in our trigger. I'm going to say add placeholder. And this is going to be where the event column has a value of parameter. So I'm going to pick the event column and say value equals parameter. Click Next and finish. Let's go ahead and save this and restart our interface.
As a reminder, we had two values of flow. One was a value of 12 and one was a value of 13 at the following two timestamps. Let's take a look at what this looks like in PySystem Explorer. Here in PySystem Explorer, I now have an attribute called flow, but there's only one of them and it has a value of 13. And that's because we weren't able to create two separate attributes with the same name, flow with a value of 12 and flow with a value of 13. Instead, the value of 13 came in afterwards and re overwrote the value of 12. There's a couple ways around this. One, which is definitely not preferred, is you could leave the name of the attribute blank, and it would make attributes with names like event underscore three, event underscore four, things like that, which is very not desirable. One option could be to set the property name as something that you know is unique, like descript underscore timestamp. So let's go ahead and give that a try. If I go back to templates, property three, I could do something like this, where I take the timestamp, and we'll probably want to add an underscore in between there. Go ahead and click Save Settings, and restart the interface again. Hopping back into PySystem Explorer, you can see the two new attributes that were created after the restart with a value of 12 and 13. And the name of the attribute now is unique with the timestamp of when it happened. However, the timestamp of the actual attribute is still marked as the start time of the event frame. Additionally, the other flow attribute here at the top is not deleted by the interface. Uh, it will just remain there unless you manually deleted it. Now, this may not be a great option for you either. You might want both the value of 12 and 13 stored in a tag, for instance. And that's actually what we're going to discuss in the next video, is how to get time series type data into a tag instead of storing it in multiple attributes like this.